Okay, so let's have a look at uh, the programming side of it. Let's write the program on the Raspberry Pi. Let's write a Python 3 code. And uh, of course, I'll just uh, maximize this so that you have only the Raspberry Pi screen to be seen. Okay, uh, here we go with a file. We start with a new file and let me call it as, let me save it as a blinking. Okay, sorry, I need to save it in the folder IoT Basics. Just a second. Blinking. And uh, here in this particular folder, we need to, here in this particular file, we need to say, uh, we need to import a particular module called as the Raspi, sorry, the rpi.gpio module. We need to import this particular module. We need to import the rpi.gpio module because this has the necessary functions and this has the necessary methods and, uh, uh, and keywords and stuff like that, which we will use during the code. Uh, which we will, which we will tell to, you know, in order to make the LED, in order to make pin number, uh, seven, that is the pin number, the board numbering pin number seven, uh, to act as a output pin, to act as an input pin, to give an output of five volt, to give an output of zero volt, and so, and so on. So we need to tell the GPIO pins to accordingly act, and hence we need to use the rpi.gpio library. Let's use that, by the way. And how do we use it? Let's say import rpi dot uh, gpio as uh, as why as because there's a very big name rpi dot gpio. If we keep using the rpi dot gpio dot setup import rpi dot gpio dot output every time you need to write this rpi dot gpio, it is going to be a headache. So we write it as a small small name. If you remember, I had taught you this. If you have a big name for a module when you import it, you can make it a small name. All right, and then we need to use the different functions of the rpi.gpio uh, module. So the first function that we need to use is to tell the Raspberry Pi whether to use the board numbering or the Broadcom numbering. The first board numbering, according to board numbering, if you're using, it was pin number seven. If it was according to Broadcom numbering, it was pin number four. That's how, I uh, hope you remember that. Okay, if you want to have a look, you can have a look. Pin number seven was board, GPIO four was according to the Broadcom numbering. All right, so we need to say which numbering are we using? We are going to use the board numbering or the Broadcom numbering. You can do whatever is convenient uh, for you. And uh, for me, both are fine. Um, but then anyway, I'll just write the board numbering for now. Uh, GPIO dot uh, dot. I need to use the method called as uh, set mode. So set mode is a method which tells the Raspberry Pi set mode is a, sorry, GPIO module. I have, I'm sorry, I should, I need to write this in small if you remember. This is the module name GPIO and the met the function name is set mode. So the function name set mode is used to tell the Raspberry Pi, uh, you know, which mode uh, the numbers should be used, whether it's board or whether it is Broadcom. If it is board, I need to use the keyword uh, which is there in that particular module GPIO dot. If it is board, I need to say B O A R D. If it is Broadcom, I need to say GPIO dot uh, B C M. All right, so I need to say gpio.bcm. All right, if you want to use the Broadcom numbering. Okay, so uh, I need to set the mode. So I've set the mode at uh, gpio.board. Now I need to say the pin number, that is pin number, uh, I guess pin number uh, seven. This particular pin, should it act as an input or should it act as an output? We need to say that. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll say that uh, it should act as an output. So to say that there is another function, that function name is called as set, uh, set up. Uh, that particular function set up, what does it do? It sets up the particular pin to act as an input or it acts as an output. So we need to use this particular uh, nomenclature. Okay, so to set up this particular pin and this particular, uh, you know, uh, this particular thing is going to be used for for giving an input or you know for telling the telling that the pin should be acting as an input or an output so we're going to call this method let's say gpio dot setup we need to say first of all the first argument that it takes is the pin number of course it's going to be pin number seven it should act as an input or an output it should act as an output why output because it gives a high and a low that pin is going to give a high and a low it is not going to take any value from the led but it's going to give some value to the led Hence, it's going to act as an output. So I need to say GPIO dot out. All right. If you need to, if you need to make the pin act as an input, I need to say GPIO dot in. So that's how uh, you need to say that. 
All right, so the seventh pin is going to act as an output pin. Now I need to do something continuously again and again. So I need to give a high to pin number seven, then I need to give a low to pin number seven, and then I need to repeat it again and again. Um, you know, sometimes high, sometimes low, sometimes high, some means not uh, high for some time, low for some time, then again high for some time, then low for some time. That's how you need to keep repeating it, and that needs to keep repeating indefinitely. Hence, you need to give it a loop. And that loop, uh, the condition can be true because uh, you want the thing to repeat again and again. All right. Now, if you want to give a particular value to a particular pin, that means if you want to give a high to a particular pin, you need to use a sorry, you need to use a function called as output. Whatever you output on a particular pin, you can keep outputting and you can you know guess what can be done. So let's say I want to output uh, a high, then I want to output a low right on a particular pin so i'm going to use this particular function i'm not going to call it so gpio dot output and i need to say which pin that is pin number seven what i want to output i want to output a high high means one or you can even say true all right and then after that i need to output a output a low but uh, after outputting a high and a low of course see this is going to happen so very fast that you're not able to, you're not going to be able to see it. So when you when you send a high, when you send a low, when you send a high, when you send a low, you may not be able to see the output as such. Hence, uh, you need to do something. That is, uh, you need to state here uh, whether there is a, you know, whether there is a, uh, whether you need to give a high and whether you need to. So you need to state here that there is going to be a delay after you give a high. And you need to say you need to give a small delay even after you give a low. Why? Because uh, if you do not give uh, a high or a low out here, uh, sorry, if you do not give a delay, you are not able to see the output. Like it's true or false, you are not able to see it constantly. So you need to give a delay. How will you give a delay? You need to import a particular module again, and that module is time. Import time. So from the time module, we are going to use the sleep sleep function. So I can call it like this: time dot sleep. Again, uh, I need to see sleep takes a parameter in seconds, so I can say 0.5. Okay, so this is one way. Another way is if you don't know, since we are using only one function sleep, I don't need to import the entire time. I can also say from time import import sleep. I can use this particular uh, Pythonic also. So then I don't need to say this time dot sleep. I just need to say sleep 0.5. Again, sleep. I call this function sleep. And then I say again, 0.5 seconds. You can again go off to sleep. All right, let's save this and let's run it. Uh, it gives you a small warning. The warning is that it's already in use. That's fine. That's okay. That's not a problem. Don't worry about the warning. All right, we're just going to have a look at the output. Uh, let me just turn my camera onto it, and you can have a look at the uh, at the output. Okay.